Eric was Sadie's only child. Her life really revolved around Eric because there was nobody else. He showed no academic interest. But the ability he did show from being a very, very little child was to, he wanted to entertain. OK, very still and quiet everywhere, please. Action! But where she was, I suppose, arguably slightly pushy... Did you know, really move on? Could have got changed, could have got there. Is it she made him have his dance lessons and, you know, piano lessons and all the rest of it? Fifteen, I'll get a paper out. Seventeen, I'll learn to read it. Oh, but it's very cute. I think Sadie probably wanted him to do something that maybe she wished she'd have done, but she didn't. So she uh, took Eric along to do his auditions and things. He didn't want to go. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Eric and her clearly had this relationship where he would occasionally claim that she pushed him onto a stage and he didn't have any choice. What I wanted to do with the drum was to show that to some level... And we Thank you. That was a bit of a delusion on Eric's part. Oh. It's as simple as this. There wouldn't have been Morecambe and Wise without her. I do think that the Morecambe and Wise show does contain a lot of oblique tributes to Sadie. When he's doing those song and dance routines, hamming it up a bit, but still doing it very well, where he's kind of saying to her, look, Mum, those dancing lessons paid off after all. Get off! <laughs> Sadie played such a pivotal role in Eric's career, and when he teamed up with Ernie, she gave his partner the same support. Ernie, he was a child star from the age of six. He worked with Tommy Hanley as the office boy, and he worked with Arthur Askey, and he did his first command performance for the Queen's parents. He did Run, Rabbit, Run. We're now going to start with our first act, the young Eric and young Ernie. I think Eric and Ernie, when they first got to know each other, they sort of looked at each other a little bit suspiciously because they were like the competition. And then, of course, later on, when Ernie hadn't got digs and they say this, oh, you know, he can come in with, with Eric, we've got, we've got room. And then that was it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this evening's entertainment. Let me tell you, we have got a show for you tonight. And she really did almost love Ernie like another son. He was the brother that Eric never had. What's that? A Greek it's a Greek earth. About 35 a week. <laughs> when Eric and Ernie were staying uh, in this boarding house in Chiswick... Are we still talking about the birth certificate now? <laughs> yes. Ah, good. Because I found it for you. It was Sadie who went out and worked as a child lady. She was getting down on her hands and knees, scrubbing other people's floors. I found your birth certificate. So when people say, what did Sadie do for Eric? It wasn't just what she did for Eric, it was what she did for Ernie, and ultimately what she did for Morecambe and Wise. Name a father, George Arthur Thomas Morecambe. <laughs> Could I have a word with you, little brother? It takes a mother, doesn't it, to sort of put two people together and say, you know, now you're a great act, you can be a great act. <laughs> and from that day onwards, they were to entertain millions and millions of people. He's a genius! Come in! Variety had been struggling for some years, at least since the end of the war, but Ernie could see that television was the way forward, and their boys wrote to the BBC, they wrote, Dear Sirs, we would like to give an audition for television. If it could be arranged, we do modern cross-talk and song and dance. Awaiting your reply, Eric Morecambe and Ernie Wise. But the boys would have to wait six years before their wish was granted. Their first television series, Running Wild, was live and there's no record of it. But for our film, we were able to get hold of the original scripts and recreate it. When they got their first television series, 
that must have felt like you know the, the defining moment in, in, in their career and the defining moment for them to become what they they knew they could become they trusted TV people they assumed that if if that's the way telly people want it they must know better than us where will the cameras be like tonight the cameras will be where they are now well, between us and the audience we'll be able to see us properly can we get a milk crate in for Ernie trust me it works to be offered that series was a great thing, I suppose, but they followed the scripts, mind you. It wasn't their own material. They had the scripts written for them, and they thought, these are the professionals, they know best, we must do it how they've written it. Oh, yes! For them, when they had to use the writers that they were given by the BBC, it must have been awful. When you write your own stuff, you feel it, and you you put yourself into, into it, and you can then deliver it the right way. And now, ladies and gentlemen, can you please welcome uh, Morecambe and Wise are running wild! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Live from the famous Shepherd's Bush Empire. Oh, yes! I, I do think it was simply a case that it wasn't very good. It just wasn't that funny. We're from BBC Television. Yes, Eurovision. Eurovision? Eurovision yourself! You know, they were telling old jokes, recycling old stuff. In essence, Eric and Ernie on that programme weren't like the Eric and Ernie which we know uh, and love nowadays. So this is the, uh, the Running Wild script. It says 2nd of June 1954. That's not a bad joke. We've come all the way from Boot Hill. You mean Boot Hill, just outside Deadwood? No, Boot Hill, just outside Liverpool. That's not bad. <laughs> They've taken away the essence of the live double actor and made them just telly, which is obviously a mistake, because what they had, they'd had 20 years training in a live environment, and they've basically said, right, forget all that, we're, not, we're, we're doing something new now called television, and so that's obviously probably the reason it went wrong. It's the same now with stand-up. If you see stand-up on TV now that's specifically made for television, it's never quite as good. But things like Live at the Apollo, which is a camera in a theatre, it does work. They realised this 50 years ago. You can't just blame the writers and the BBC. But it's mainly your fault. And... action! I think by common consent it flopped, or if it didn't flop, it just went... slightly. The reviews the next day... Read that. Definition of a TV. The box that buried Morecambe and Wise in last night. You read it? I did. It was a disaster. It was a complete and utter disaster. I think Eric was more devastated than Ernie. The story goes, he carried that little cutting around in his pocket, you know. <laughs> Cut! Thank you. And moving on, thank you. Ernie reacted by quite sensibly locating part of the problem in the fact that they weren't treated seriously because they were seen as a couple of kind of hapless northern comics who could be manipulated into doing an act that wasn't them. The material wasn't them. One of the producers of the programme, Brian Sears, actually had his doubts from the start and in fact at one point told them that their biggest problem was that they were from the wrong part of the country. Now, as a northerner, I believe that the best comics come from the north, but that's not an opinion held by everybody. And in fact, when I first went to the BBC in 1984, I was told later that they were a little bit worried that I was too northern. So you can imagine how much worse it was for Eric and Ernie in the 1950s. On behalf of the BBC, I offer a special greeting and a warm welcome to our new viewers in the Midlands. The world of television was very much the world of West London and it was pretty upper crust. Uh, you didn't hear many regional accents uh, in those days on television. Right away, Pete, it's all yours. I can remember Sylvia Peters reading the news, of course, in an evening dress, and MacDonald Hobley in black tie. I'm very sorry to say that we're in a little bit of trouble, rather early in the evening to bring you a disappointment. Famously, the BBC, in its early days, uh, applied the Rethian thing of, of the classic RP accent. Action! Do you want to buy me an airgun? Why would I want to buy you an airgun? Because I laugh at your jokes. 
I mean, this was an era when, if you put a northern accent on the home service, people would complain. 